Happy day to all my friends that are watching this video. Um, this is the astro weather for this new week, um, Thursday the 9th through um, Wednesday the 15th. I decided I was just gonna do, I was gonna stop on Wednesday so we can do Thursday to Thursday. I might end up changing it. Um, I would ultimately kind of like to get it closer to the beginning of the week, like Tuesday. Um, but we'll just we'll just see how it goes so this time was a little bit easier i'm really excited that um you know i didn't have to like look up as much stuff i didn't have to i didn't feel as dependent on like finding information and like that kind of knowledge like the yeah it was there was a little bit more of like internal knowing and and stuff that was coming more from my heart rather than my head so um, I'm excited to share this with you I did make some notes for all of the days so if you see me reading it's because I am <laughs> reading out of my little notebook um, so we'll get started so um, for Thursday September 9th the Sun is in Virgo and the moon is in Libra that's earth and air um, there are five planets in air and four planets in earth. That's just a really, really heavy concentration. Um, there are four elements. So to have it that heavy, um, on two out of the four is, we can probably all feel it in some way or another. Having earth and air together, um, can result in like a really heady, um, energy where you kind of get stuck in your head, lots of mental commotion. Uh, maybe thinking in circles or kind of indecisive vacillating between ideas. Um, there is still a drive to get things done thanks to Mars and Virgo. But we can feel kind of indecisive on what exactly to do or what steps to take. With Libra, which is where the moon is, um, Libra is the sign of the scales. It's balance, it's harmony, it's like relationship and all in the other and being aware of all of the others that are around you, whether you're in a relationship or not, we can still be aware of the others that we interact with. Um, this can also contribute to the indecisiveness when our emotional body is in the sign of Libra. Um, we can be aware of how we may rock the boat, how we may disturb the har harmony or disturb the peace. Um, being aware of how in harmony or not the people around you are can make you second guess yourself. It can make you um, concerned with the ripples that you're making. You don't want to throw off someone else's harmony. You don't want to... Um, sometimes we get really concerned with like like helping to balance them out if someone is feeling really low or really angry we like we want to influence them so they can be in balance so we can feel in balance and while that's coming from a good place um it's not really your place it's important that everybody has their own experience um of all of the emotions so today would be a good day to journal to make lists to get everything that's inside of your head out in some way. So whether it's a social way, you're calling your friends, you're talking to um, loved ones, or you are writing it out, that's um, that's going to help us to not get so we can get stuck stuck in like circular thoughts. Friday, September 10th. The sun is in Virgo and the moon is in Scorpio. So now we have earth and water. If you add earth and water together, you get mud. This is a little bit slower than it's been when there were five planets in air and um, four planets in earth. The air is very speedy. It's very fast. It's like lightning. Um, and now we're, we're slowing down a little bit. We're, we have some water in the mix, finally. Um, less speedy because the moon moved into an intense water sign. We may feel more slowed down. We haven't had a muddy placement, a muddy placement like this um, in a while. Emotions can be much more intense. Scorpio is the sign of depth and intensity and rebirth and death and some of the things that, that make us uncomfortable to think about. So there's a great deal of, of depth that is touching our emotional body. We can feel extremely happy, extremely sad. It's like 
It's like you're filling into the all of the spaces of your emotional spectrum with Scorpio. Um, there can be a pull to mix things up, to like stir up a little bit of drama so we can feel that intense emotional experience. Um, and feel called to stir up emotional excitement, um, whether it's within ourselves or if it is involving other people. The moon is opposite of Uranus right now. So your feelings reaction, your feelings and your reactions control the direction you move in your life. So this muddy placement, um, the slow with earth and water, slowing things down a little bit, um, is more conducive to pausing before you react. Um, so use the slowness that is around you, that kind of energetic mud that we're in right now to act in a deliberate manner rather than just riding those Scorpio intense emotions out. <clears throat> um, we can get, it's almost like, like emotionally impulsive or like, well, we may lash out or we may, um, we would feel some things that's so extreme and then we move right away to do something about it, whether it's like using a mean voice or saying something maybe we wouldn't say if we weren't feeling so intensely. Um, so use the muddiness, use, use um, the earth and the water energy that we have right now to help you slow down a little bit and like choose how you react rather than impulsively reacting. Um, use the slowness that comes from earth and water to act in a deliberate manner rather than being so reactive or emotional that you lash out or behave in a destructive way. Uranus can make us feel a little bit erratic in our emotional nature. So there is, <laughs> there is that. We have that already, the tendency towards erratic energy mixed in with the intense energy of Scorpio moon we can get ourselves into some trouble there. So lean into the mud, lean into the slowness with the earth and water. Um, Saturday, September 11th, the moon is still in Scorpio, the sun is still in Virgo. This is a really good day to do something to connect with your intuitive side. Um, we did the feeling thing on Friday and we're gonna do like the dreamy intuition thing on Saturday. Neptune is trining the emotional body, so that just, um, it's giving us an intuitive, dreamy quality. Whenever we see a trine, um, it just indicates that there's like an effortless connection, an effortless skill or effortless talent. It's kind of like having a phone call that doesn't, it doesn't drop there. It's like perfect cell signal. So the mystic, the Neptune, the dreamer is, um, is trining with the moon. So it's in harmony with our emotional body. So um, hopefully some of that intense scorpionic energy in our emotional body is a little bit behind us and we can relax and soften, get dreamy, um, meditate, maybe take a bath, daydream, play with your pendulum or your tarot cards, see, like, see what kinds of, how you can connect with your intuition. Let your rational side take a rest for the day. Um, to allow your creative, intuitive abilities to flourish or develop. That can feel so counterproductive. Um, but we know from, from Virgo that being is just as important as doing. Um, Venus also moves into Scorpio today. So this is intensifying our attraction to the Scorpionic themes, which are its intuition, its intensity, its depth, its death and rebirth, its creation, its... Um, some of those things that can be a little bit uncomfortable to talk about or think about death and dying is in our culture it's not it's not something that we that we talk about very much that that brings up a lot of fear in people um so some of those darker more hidden aspects of of who we are as people um we're going to feel more attracted to or going to feel more maybe more courage to like dive into and have some of these conversations and think about some of these things um and this is intensifying our attraction to more deep mystical topics this adds to the pull towards deepening your inner knowing um, the energy of transformation and the attraction to it will be expanded 
Sunday, September 12th. The sun is in Virgo, the moon is in Sag. So now we have some fire again. It's been a while, it feels like, since there was some fire in the sky. Sagittarius is, it's fire, it's optimism, it's luck, it's joy, it's expansion, learning, seeking, passion, and fun. Um, this is a, it's a, it's a pleasant place for our emotional body to be. The moon, let's see, with this moon, our ego is opposite Neptune. So today, um, the sun is opposite of where Neptune is. And we talked about Neptune a little bit ago. It is, it's mystical. It's dreamy. It's like not quite of this realm. I think of Albert Einstein. Like he just knew things. He didn't even, he didn't even finish high school. And he got to be um, a college professor. He found like the equations of the universe. He's a brilliant mind, um, but not just not quite of this world. Like he didn't fit into the structures that we have in place. Um, so that mystical, weird, um, out there energy is is opposite of our ego potentially making us feel confused about who we are and what our self-expression is and like how we show up, what we should be doing, how we should express ourselves in an outward manner. So confusion is never fun. Confusion can make us feel uncertain. Our brain um, views confusion as a problem that needs to be, a, to be solved. Um, so it can just cause some uncomfortable feelings. It's not comfortable to not know like where you are, who you, st how you, st where you stand, like those big questions. Um, so what do we do? We use the Sag moon to find humor. We find the Sag moon to help us laugh and to feel optimistic and lucky. We don't need, we don't need to put so much pressure on ourselves to identify who we are right now, because I kind of think that we're always in flux. Like, I just think that's the, that's how everything works. The moon is in flux, the tides are in flux, the seasons are in flux, our bodies are in flux, our cells are in flux. Every I don't think that we're exempt from that that pattern. Um, laughter will help you to deal with the potential tension from feeling confused. Allow your spa self space to look at the big picture, um, to not focus so hard on the tiny little details, um, but just to let yourself expand to see like the big ultimate picture, the big dream. If you don't know exactly who you are or the fine details, that's okay. If you still know what you want and who you want to be in the grand scheme of things, then we can work the details out. That's the, that's the minor stuff. Um, Monday, September 13th, the sun is in Virgo, the moon is still in Sag. Um, there is a T-square in the sky today, which means that the, the, a lot of the planets are opposing other planets, and it happens to be in um, a mutable, mutable signs. So if you picture a four-way stop, I always picture Jefferson Point's four-way stops. If you're in Fort Wayne, then you probably know. They're awful. They're awful, especially in the wintertime around Christmas. It's like I will go 20 minutes out of my way to avoid going there because all the cars pull up and people just sit there because no one knows whose turn it is to go and it's awful and sometimes like people will start to go and then they'll stop and they'll start to go and they'll stop. That's the kind of energy that we get from a T-square. Doesn't necessarily feel good, um, but remember tension is really important for growth, for evolution, for propelling us forward. If everything was easy all the time, we'd never have a reason to change um, or to step outside of our comfort zone. So Sun in Virgo, Moon in Sag, Neptune in Pisces. The release point is in Gemini. So where you will find relief from all of the tension that there is in the sky um, is through Gemini, Gemini things. Gemini is an air sign. So talking, Gemini rules siblings and cousins. So maybe give your, one of your siblings or a cousin a phone call. Um, recognize that you may be feeling tense. Recognize that you may be feeling disharmonious, that you may be picking up on this energy and then it might not feel good. Give it a name. Say it out loud. I feel tension. Just giving the discomfort a name or a label can be helpful words that's a gemini thing um 
releasing in Gemini. Gemini things will provide relief for you. Talk to your siblings or cousins, take a short trip, even if it's just to the other side of town. Um, listen to music, read a book, read a magazine, dive into a hobby that you've been ignoring. All of these kind of Gemini traits, activities um, are going to help you to deal with that tension so it's not so consuming. Tuesday, September 14th, the sun is in Virgo, the moon is in Capricorn. So the moon shifts out of that really optimistic and fun sign of, of Sagittarius into the more restrictive and um, practical sign of Capricorn. It's double earth. There's, there's a lot of practicality. There's a lot of room um, to do the earthly to do the earthly things. Look at your bank account, check the mail, maybe put the mail in the organizational spots where it belongs. Um, time to think about some of those big picture things that we thought of with the Sagittarius moon um, and begin to create a little bit of structure. Um, create some systems or some stepping stones for really moving in that direction. Even if we don't have all of the finer details worked out, um, we can start to see like maybe one step, maybe one step at a time is all that you see. And that's perfect. Um, the confusion from Neptune still opposite of the sun is still inner, inner influencing our self-expression or outer expression is still there. It's okay. Um, I think that our self-expression is always in flux, so we don't need to we don't need to be really attached to that sense of identity in order to know where we want to go. And that's why we lay the foundation when we have all the earth and the heavens. Um, Wednesday, September fifteenth, the sun is in Virgo, the moon is still in Capricorn. It's a harmonious connection between inner and outer expressions. The sun, ego, is trining the moon and Pluto. So we know trine is like that phone call where there's no interruptions, there's perfect self-service. It's easy, it's harmonious, it's effortless. So there's an easy breezy inner to outer world energy. The planets of ego, emotions, drive, and transformation all interact in an easy, effortless, harmonious way. This is a really good day to move to passionately in the direction of your dreams. Your ego is supportive of your inner world. Your inner world is supportive of your ego. Your emotions, your ego are, are all supportive of creation and creative destruction. Things sometimes have to die in order for new things to be born. This is a good time to let that happen. It can be scary, it can be uncomfortable, um, but right now, all of the energy around you is its very conducive to allowing new to happen. Um, all of this harmony is blessed by practical energy. You'll know what steps to take. Slash, I can't believe I just said slash. Um, you'll know what steps to take or how to structure, how to organize efforts to transform the old into new. Say goodbye to the parts of yourself that are no longer in alignment with who you want to be. And we don't even need to know who we are right now to know who we want to be, who we're striving for, what aligns with that big picture goal that we're working towards. Um, so I hope that this resonates with you. I hope that maybe it was a little bit more clear than the last one. And I thank you so much for your time and your attention, your, your thoughts and everything. I hope you all have a wonderful week and let me know if you have any questions.